helps. Podcasts are really helping. Before podcasts, people weren't prepared for the shock. The shock of what Jesus has accomplished for us, which is radically beyond a salvation message. And we've made it a salvation message when it's, it's a union message, it's a transfiguration message, it's a brand new world that we haven't realized the scandal and the wonder of what Jesus has done for us. And because we haven't repented enough, we haven't changed our mind enough. Am I frying the battery on this now as well? Thank you, Father. So, Father, we just pray for no more technical difficulties. I'm having a lot of problems with, like, equipment, and I don't like it. You know, electricity coming off me and, and, and like, things manifesting around my body. You know, every time I touch my door, it goes psh at the hotel. Every time my computer's got a leather cover on it because I can't put my hands on the metal anymore. You know, I go through metal, de- you know, at the airport, I went through the metal detector on one of my trips, and I was so full of this realm of union. Because when you're at airports, you have to be in the spirit. You have to. You have to exist on planet Earth. You have to be in the spirit. This is why we keep needing revivals, because we're not living in the spirit. The better choice is just from the moment you wake up, say, I'm in. I'm not an outie, I'm an innie. And you live as an innie, in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. In him we live, in him we move. I don't have a separation mindset. Separation has been cancelled at the cross. We bled into one. Separation is an illusion. Yay! Yeah. So, you know, I went through this metal detector and, I, and, and the, the, the scanner showed that my whole body was metal. I was like, yeah, I'm Wolverine, dude. And I've had a lot of fun with equipment because, uh, you know, this is an aside, it's not my message tonight, but we can actually control technology. Inside you is Wi-Fi. You have... You have the unlimited power of the Spirit, right? It says the incomparable power. So you have a power supply in you that's more powerful than any Wi-Fi router, and you can actually release energy on every wavelength. You're children of light. What is light? Light is wave patterns. You can arise and shine out, and I, I think as we mature, we won't need clickers. You know, I've got stories about controlling technology by being in the spirit and controlling it with my spirit. Because that's the natural progression of us being revealed as the government. See, we have to start to restore the wonder that we are more than human. See, the, the, the Beyond Human book isn't new doctrine. My Beyond Human book this Beyond Human School, it's all ancient teachings that we need to remember because we've got a memory issue. Psalm 22 verse 27 says, all the nations, all the nations will turn and remember that you are God. They won't discover that he's God. They will remember. You know, if you want to see revival, kind of prophecies about revival don't interest me very much because I've already seen the future. Do you know how you get revival? Just stay alive. If you want to see revival, just stay alive because the whole planet is being transformed. The whole planet is going to be David's tent. The whole planet, every nation will turn and remember. Every nation, every tribe, every tongue will remember. Every part of this planet is going to be saturated with the knowledge of his goodness. It says the knowledge of his goodness will cover the earth as waters cover the seas. How can water cover seas? Because it's not talking about water, it's talking about wave patterns of energy. All your waves and breakers have crashed over me. When he wrote that, were there literally waves of the sea and breakers? No, he was saying frequency, energy, vibration. I will pour out my spirit. When you receive the spirit, do you receive a water on the top of your head? Or did you receive an energy from another dimension that unlocked you into the pattern of your design? 
And it says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That means every human body is included in this. It's not just about your spirit. It's not just about your mind. Your body is part of this era. That your body needs to begin to be metamorphosized. That is restoring the desolation of generations. See, I was shown when I encountered Enoch that we're in the era where it says you'll be called repairers of the breach. Woo! Oaks of righteousness. For the display, so there will be splendor, which means you have to be splendid, and you will become oaks of righteousness, rebuild cities, rebuild earth, rebuild the whole system of creation. And then it says, restoring the desolation of generations. Generations means genetics. When we talk about genealogy, genetics, we're talking about the encoding of the human body being transfigured back to its authentic pattern. So Jesus wants to go way beyond good meetings on this planet. He wants to, us to change the world and then all of creation. So I'm going to layer it and I want to show you biblically so you get a foundation tonight of what Jesus has done for you because all of the beyond human phenomena that I've experienced has come from this revelation of the ecstatic gospel that I'm in him and he's in me. That one thought is enough for you to enter into everything in that book. Teleportation, metamorphosis, telepathy, all of these terms, all of these things that are in that book are all accessible by being in him so that as he is, so are you in this world. See, of yourself, you can do nothing. So give up trying to do it yourself. Come into union because the door is in the floor. That's how you access all of heaven is through going lower to go higher. See, even when I'm in my room at the hotel praying, I, I'm still going in. I've, I've seen major victories in the courtroom of heaven to change national and international events. But I still go in as one who is learning. I still go in as one who knows nothing. For what do we know? If we accumulated all the knowledge in this room of God, it would just be a dot. I was hoping for a whiteboard. I would imagine a whiteboard right now. I draw a black dot. All we know as humanity is that dot, but that entire whiteboard has not been explored. See, we have to allow ourselves to, to, to embrace change. You know his name is yod Hey vav Hey. The Yod, which is the first letter, is a dot. It's called the infinite dot. He is infinite and he's in you and you've been made in his image, which means you need to start being something more than anything else in creation. He hasn't, I'm not willing to lower the standards. Like Bill Johnson says, we've repented enough to be saved, but not enough to see the kingdom. So we have to repent. The word repent is metanoia, as you know, which means change the way you think. It means to be pent up. Repentance means you've had enough. I'm pent up. I've had enough. When will we have enough of the... Of the, of the wah! When will we get pent up to repent? Penthouse, return back to the high place. Return back to the original persuasion that God has for you. See, it's very easy to preach my Beyond Human book because he said that with him all things are possible. So I kind of think I made it pretty small, that book. It's really hard for God to pull back and say, you can't have it when he said, I'm the yes and amen. When he said that he wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond what you ask or even dare to think. So even when I talk about like the change in appearance, Jesus changed appearance, teleportation, metamorphosis, releasing light, releasing energy, is still something we can think of. So what did scripture have in mind when it says he can do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond what you dare to think? So I think we need to start thinking bigger. 
which is repentance, because we will know our minds renewed when the impossible looks logical. When it's logical that I can teleport back to Wales to visit my wife, that's a repented mind. Okay. <laughs> Who said that? Come on, yeah. Are you Canadian? Come on, yes. <laughs> so, I just want to say a few things then before we get started. I'm not going to go on too long tonight because I know you've traveled. But I just want to say this. Everyone here tonight is powerful to disagree. This era is not based on agree agreeing on doctrines. It's based on family, yeah. connection, heart connection, and being powerful. You are powerful to disagree because you have to work out your salvation with Jesus. You have to be powerful enough to ask him. And maybe the way he does it with you will be completely different. So don't lose your power and don't feel that this, that's disunity. That's not disunity. I've got a unified family, but do we always agree? No, but we, won't, we agree here that we value and honor and treasure and move towards one another. And we don't punish each other by removing relationship as a form of manipulation and false power. So we're all connected, we're all one. We can't actually split. If you split it, it's just an illusion because we're one body in heaven and on earth vitally connected to each other. We all need each other. We all have value. So we've got to give each other permission as well to make mistakes. We shouldn't be afraid of mistakes because God isn't afraid of mistakes. He's, he's designed creation that we learn through mistakes. So we, are, we can all think differently and we all have to realize if people are afraid of deception in this room, I want you to know we're all deceived. Because it says that the issue is the way we think. See, it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means every one of us is deceived in some area because you're still growing older. You're not immortal. You still need to sleep. You still need food. Which means there's areas we haven't understood the gospel yet because we're not functioning in those areas. Which means we're all on the same journey. When I said we're all deceived, I was quoting Rick Joyner. I trust Rick Joyner. He's a great author. How many of you guys love Rick Joyner? I'm going to be speaking at Morningstar for the first time later in the year. I'm really excited with Rick at the Morningstar headquarters. And I'm really thrilled about that because I honor him. But he said we're all deceived. So don't be afraid of deception. Otherwise, you'll be afraid of just being alive. There are all areas that we don't know. And can I just say another thing is, we've applied this rule to the spirit realm, but not technology. Because how many people actually know how this thing works? Do you even know how your microwave works? So listen, we, don't, we use things all the time that we don't understand, right? Which means we don't have to have the answers to step into it. See, that we've had a wrong way of engaging the spirit where we think we have to understand it to function in it. No, you have faith and enter into it and then understanding may come. So as with natural technology, spiritual technology is being released right now. Now we've had to come up with new words like Google, Twitter, and all these other words, tag in, you know, I don't know, <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> but we have to allow us in the spirit to now put new words. We need a language revolution like Shakespeare had. You know, Shakespeare, when he was writing his plays, there weren't words for the ideas he had, so he invented 1,000 words. He didn't bother explaining them. He just put them in his plays, and they became the language of the day. See, we need new language for some of the stuff that we're going through. In my book, I've tried to come up with simple language. But there are things that you can do right now that we haven't got language for. So we're going to have to make up new terms for it. We're going to have to allow the language of the Spirit to expand because technology is just an outflow of the Spirit anyway. God is releasing things in the Spirit like cardionosis. That's a word I use in the book. It means heart connection, knowledge. 
but there may be better terms for it, like interfacing, I don't know. But we need to allow new language to happen. So don't be afraid that if you, you have to be the first person in this room to invent a new word. Yeah. Wordsmithery. Because <laughs> you may have experiences where there is no word for it. I have to keep inventing words for the team because we have experiences in God that we haven't got a word for. So we just decide, we just decide oh, we're going to call it that, or we're going to call it this. Okay. Thank you, Father. So here we go. I want to talk tonight briefly about the gospel that gripped Paul and how I got to where I am right now. I was pressing in for God, pressing in for revival. I started taking Fridays off work because I wanted to see something more happen in Britain than what we'd seen. And I was unbalanced in my hunger. So I didn't let lower my hunger to the pack. I decided I'm going to go for it and that'll pull everyone else forwards. See, it's wrong to pull back for the others. That doesn't change anyone. What changes them is you breaking through to the other side and they all suddenly start stepping in. So I, you know, I started to pray three nights a week with my wife and people in the church were going, oh, you pull back there, he actually said, pull back. Because you're going too fast for us to keep up. Because the experiences I was beginning to have with angels appearing, orbs flying around the living room, voices, pillars of fire, smoke, breakouts on the streets, glory in the coffee shop, gold just on the plane, all this other stuff. And I thought, no, because this is still not it. It's part of it, but there has to be a realm from which we can never pull back. So I, I began to press in and I got really drunk. And I wasn't expecting to get drunk because I didn't want to be drunk particularly. I wanted to be able to like help people. <laughs> but I didn't know that if you delight yourself, which means to take pleasure in the Lord, he gives you the desires of your heart. The way that he gives it to you is through bliss and union and intoxication. And that the wine is alive and the wine is Jesus Christ. That the wine contains his DNA. Consider this, I was in Oregon and they took me on a helicopter to a, um, a place, a vineyard with this French guy and they had all these wines out for us to taste, it was wonderful. But he said, we know w w where this wine came from by tasting it. We know which elevation it had. We know what year it grew. We know what soil it contains. We know which region it came from by tasting it. And I was like, God spoke to me. He said, how do they know that by tasting? Because when they taste, they ingest the history of the grape. When they ingest that wine, they ingest the DNA, which is an encoded history of the life of that creature. It's the soil, the season, the year. And then the Lord showed me that is what we do when we take the wine of the Spirit. We ingest the divine d DNA. We digest the story of Jesus Christ. Communion isn't just drinking wine. It is drinking the very DNA of God himself to encode you with his memories, his experiences, his world, his soil. And he wants to give us a wine. And I didn't know that that was the way of God. That he wanted me to taste to see. That he wanted me to drink my way through heaven. <laughs> Yo! So Paul understood this. He got so gripped because he tried religion. He tried his own efforts. He tried being hyper-religious. And he had an encounter with Jesus as a glowing ball of levitating light on the road and it ripped his consciousness apart and showed him the gospel and for him the gospel wasn't a salvation message it was a lifestyle of union of bliss of wonder of joy and he became so possessed by that message he went all around the world preaching kainos that if any man or person be in christ 
there is a new Kainos creation. That the old has gone and the new has come. And it says in scripture that he was possessed. He said in Galatians, this is not a human message. This is not a human message. It's not human. It's not human. <laughs> and he said in, in Romans 1, that I, I'm a bond slave by nature, belonging to Christ Jesus, an ambassador by divine summons, permanently separated to God's good news. In Acts 18.5, it says, Paul became completely possessed by the message, wholly absorbed. Have you got wholly absorbed and possessed by this new creation message? Have you understood the gospel? Have you understood what has happened to you? Has it become a wine to you? Does it intoxicate you? Does it mess with your head? Does it haunt you? Does it stalk you? Does it, do you wake up and you're in it? Because I've been in it for like 12 years and I ain't getting out of it. I'm going deeper into this message and this reality that Paul discovered which was grace unlimited intoxicating grace that the future doesn't come by a formula it comes by milk and honey and wine it comes by believing not achieving faith bypasses effort did I not say that if you believe, you will see? I believe in teleportation. Woohoo! Wow! Woohoo! And he was possessed, and this word kainos means this. It means new in form or quality, different. It's a new kind, unheard of. It's unprecedented, never known or experienced. See, Jesus didn't come just to repair Adam. Adam and all the Adam race was co-crucified together with Christ, it says just before this, that one died for all, therefore all died in him. You already died. The human experience of Adam died. See, we, we've, we're looking at the wrong Genesis. See, we have a different Genesis. For a man is in Christ, he becomes a new person and everything. Listen, the past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. Everything has become fresh and new. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Creature, you're sitting next to a creature. A creature. This is not a human message. Behold all things, say all. All. Oh, I'm sorry, that sounded Texan then. I'm sorry. I don't I can't do Canadian accents. All. 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 Anyway. Behold, the fresh and new has come. See, the problem with the church is we're waiting for the new wineskin. That's false theology. It's false, and I can prove it. Jesus said the old Adam is the old wineskin that I can't pour my nature into. That wineskin has to die, and I'm coming as the new man for the new wine. That anyone who comes in union with me, there is a new world. See, it's not another meeting that we've changed it. It's living in the reality of what he has already accomplished for you. And there were history makers throughout time that already did this. The Catholic saints, the, the Huguenots, the, the Celtic saints, all of these, the, the desert fathers, they already went way beyond us because they thought differently. Yay, so Bob Jones said, before God changes the world, there's going to be a lot of repentance. And I used to think Bob Jones meant we'd be crying out at the front, weeping. He didn't mean that. He meant we had to change our thinking, change our thinking, change our thinking. For as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. See, I have a crazy, weird life because it's as I think in my heart is becoming. 
See, we have to think, you know, I've had super strength, I've lifted heavy objects, I've teleported, I've changed appearance in a meeting, I've glowed, I've floated off the ground. Why do I believe that? Because Jesus said, the things I do, you will do. And I believe that what he did is accessible and available, and he even expanded it beyond that, and he said, the things I do, you shall do, and even greater. Why? To bring glory to his, the Father. See, the whole world's not going to change through us being gently more Christian. The world's not going to change by you being more holy. It's going to be changed by him becoming your sanctification, him becoming your holiness, him becoming your righteousness. It's not even your faith. Paul said, I no longer live in my faith. I live in the faith of the Son. Yay! Listen, I did say you were powerful to think. But what do you think about these verses? I love this one. For when anyone is in Christ, it is a new world. See, I don't live in the normal world. When I was in the airport and I set off the metal detector, I had been in the car for two hours driving to London and I'd been in the spirit. And I hadn't left the house. My spirit stayed on the house because my shalom was over it and I always remain home. Because I hold my home in my heart and I'm the covering. And when I used to travel, I used to take my spirit with me and they would miss me immediately. And every day seemed like a week to them. So one day the Lord said, well, don't leave when you go. So I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, well, cast your spirit over the house and hold them in your heart. Connect with them and be present with them in spirit, even as you leave. That fundamentally changed my relationship with travel. Because I was never leaving home. I was just multi-located. If you're a business person, you should do that with your business. I can tell her who owns a business when I walk into it. Because I walk into this spirit. So we're in a new world with a new heart. This is another doctrine in the church that we've got wrong. We're always saying, Lord, take away my stony heart. Do you know what the gospel says? That you can only get circumcised once? There's issues. Paul said this. He says, if you want to keep getting circumcised, he said, this is offensive, but Paul said it. He said, why don't you go the full distance and chop off the whole thing? Paul actually said that. That's how scandalous this was. He said, it can't be through you thinking you're going to clean up your heart. It's by believing that he has given you a new heart. I will give you new appetites, new passions. I'll entirely remove this heart. It's the opposite. The old heart is the opposite. You can, listen to that last verse. You cannot have the new heart and the old heart at the same time. See, when people say, oh, you know, my heart's a mess, this, what they're doing is creating an illusion that chokes the seed of, of their true being. See, it says the cares and worries of this world choke the seed, which is DNA of the divine nature. See, the truth is you've got a clean heart and you're perfect. That's why it says we can come boldly before the throne of grace. It says that we've got redeemed innocence. His innocence has become your innocence. Now a righteousness from God has appeared. See, when you look at this Beyond Human book, you can look at it in two ways. Either as a new set of things you've got to learn, or a new lifestyle that you're exploring in union. That he has already given to you. So he wants us to experience a new world, because that new world has arrived. See, there are angels in this room, right? It's arrived. What are we waiting for to be aware of angels? You know, I spent a lot of time with angels the last two days, talking to angels, right? In my hotel. What, what is the difference between a person that can see an angel and a person that can't see an angel? It's the way you see the world. Because what you honor and value will have expression around you. In other words, dishonor is a closed door. Honor is an open door. That's why it's religion says you can't speak to angels. What that's done is said they're less important than your dog. 
Because it did religionists don't say don't talk to animals. So they're saying animals are more holy than angels. You know, Jesus said, as I am, so are you. You know, it says in John. And does Jesus have a good relationship with angels? Does Jesus talk to angels? So we live in a new world. I, it says, be, don't be of this world. Be in the world, but not of it. So what world are you in? You're in a kinos world, which is, means it's multidimensional. You can access Zion now. See, one of the things we've got to break in the church is that we've made death the hero. And I talk about this in my podcasts. That's why death is now functioning on earth, because we're the ecclesia. We're the government of God. What we loose is loosed. What we bound is bound. And we have loosed death on the earth. Because we're the gates. We're the doors. And we've said that death has value, so we've attracted death to the earth. See, Jesus said, I am the door. Whoever believes will enter in and go in and out. It's okay if you're struggling with what I'm saying, because it's a shock. Let me just put it like this. Death is an enemy. Satan came to kill, steal, and destroy. Kill, steal, and destroy. Say boo. Boo, right? Kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus came that you may have enjoy, so joy, enjoy life and abundant life. So he didn't say, I'm just cancelling out the, the ugly three. Boo, say boo. He said, I'm giving you more than they've brought. I'm giving you life. It says the law of the spirit of life has freed us. The law, so there's a new law called life. Kainos life has freed us from the law of sin and death. But why does every church preach that you could be saved from sin, but we don't preach you can be saved from death? Because religion is the cult of death. See, if we get death out of the equation and we start to believe, we'll start to live like Enoch. It says, by faith, Enoch skipped death. It says, faith kept Enoch from dying. He's immortal and he's, he's metamorphosized into an incredible being. Elijah has, and there are many like them. And I believe they were a pattern of what we're meant to enter into, which means we have to repent about what we think about death. I know that's a hard one because our bodies have been encoded with death. But remember I said that our bodies are going to be changed, restoring the generations, the desolation. We've got a record of death and decay, but a new record of life and immortality is coming into the human body. That's why it says, I am pouring out my spirit on what? Not your mind, not your spirit, because your mind has been renewed. Your spirit is one with him. Your spirit doesn't need more Holy Spirit. It says, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So you can't have any more spirit because you were a cup of water poured into the divine sea. Where do you begin and where does he end? You haven't got a separate spirit from him. So why is the spirit being poured out on your body? On flesh. Because he came to restore what was lost. What was lost? Bodies. We lost bodies. We lost union. We lost communion. We lost our beat light expression. So where Jesus is taking this planet is way, way further than we've been preaching. We need to start preaching his dreams. His dreams are better than just just having a lovely life in a nice church. He wants us to be immortal, incorruptible beings of life, life life-giving spirits. You know... Where animals and plants respond to you. I was telling these guys about the trees that responded to me. It was so funny. Have you ever seen trees go and release colors? Amazing. So we can walk with angels. We're now in a world with angels. It says he will give his angels charge over you to accompany, defend, and preserve you in all. All your ways. In other words, whatever mess and trouble you get into, they're coming with you. Whatever you're doing, they're doing. So why haven't you got a relationship with them? Because religion, the hag in drag, told you that you couldn't talk to them. And in essence, made an apartheid system. And the end of apartheid is death. So they're saying death is what qualifies you. So in other words, that's faith in death. 
Preach it, come on! Preach it, because this is gospel. I've got a nine-part message just on what I'm saying right now on death, breaking the power of death. And we're seeing energy miracles, because what you honor will come to you. What you focus on, I kind of think life and immortality is a great idea. I think being renewed, it says those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. It says they will, they will run and not grow weary. It says those who are planted in the garden of the Lord will be fresh and flourishing even in old age. See, Abraham was a believer and he got regenerated. I mean, they had body makeovers. Sarah was a babe. I mean, no glory, glory. Do you know what I'm saying? And they lived in such glory, and they believed before Jesus had even come, because faith is what accesses it, and he's the father of faith, and the sign of us being Abraham's children is regeneration. It's time that we came back under headship and covering, the covering of life, the headship of immortality, the headship of faith. We're going to see life, life is massively expanding on earth right now, because this is coming in the spirit on us. So we can walk with angels, we can walk with a cloud of witnesses. This is another thing that we can't escape from. As for us, we have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. It was funny, I was just in Bethel and I got to do some teaching there, which in the school, and it was really fun. But the people I stayed with do marriage counseling and they had amazing stories. They've got a ministry called Love After Marriage. And they have seen people get va va voom back in their marriages. One story they gave me about the 70 year old couple, I can't even share it with you guys. Your hair will stand up. But she said to me, you know, I can't handle the thought that I'm making out and this cloud of witnesses coming in the room. I said, just get over it. They're cheering you on. <laughs> So I teach a lot on the cloud of witnesses because did Jesus interact with the cloud of witnesses? Then why don't we? In fact, it says we can't finish the job on earth without them. It says that together we're going to complete it in Hebrews. So we have to get rid of this separation. It really changes things for you when you start to have a relationship with the saints. I've learned so much from Enoch. I would not be who I am today if it wasn't for him and the other cloud of witnesses that have engaged my life. Jean Goyon, for example. And I'm so grateful. How did I start engaging the cloud of witnesses? I was desperate for friends. <laughs> and I knew they didn't have a lot of issues. I needed, a f I needed a few friends without issues for a change. <laughs> That's the truth. I was in my basement. I said, God, I really could do some good friends right now. <laughs> friends that have dealt with this stuff. And on that very first trip to France, I got taken up off the plane by the Holy Spirit to meet Enoch. And I drank his wine and it changed my thinking. For a whole year, the wine taught me and that's when the podcast started. And they, we've now had like two and a half million downloads. And, and, and the thing is, it came from the wine. It's like I'd be preaching and I'd be saying like things and they, I'd, it'd come out of my mouth and it'd be the first time I've ever heard it. It's worth having a glass of wine now and again. And we're realizing that we're one. Each one of us is joined with one another. We become together what we could not be alone. I've, I've done conferences for Catholics. I've done conferences for, you know, I was just in Bethel. I'll be in Morningstar. I don't see these boundaries that people see. Those boundaries are an illusion. There's one body in heaven and on earth. See, I don't even see a boundary between us and them in heaven. Like I've gone into many councils of God because I've desired it. Because when it has weight in your heart, it has expression in the earth. If you value his counsels, you'll be called into his counsel. That we're connected, but we're not just connected as in like, hey, we're connected. We're connected. 
I mean, we're entangled. We're one body. Like I, the relationship I've got with my closest friends, we can see each other in the spirit. You know, when Trevor invited me, uh, wanted to come to Idaho, Trevor knows this already. I was at Jane's house. Jane, it was Jane's birthday or something. He, he was about to send me a text message. I didn't know this. I saw Trevor appear in the spirit, and I knew exactly what his thoughts were, that he was going to ask to go on the trip with me. So I got my phone out, and then the phone went boop. And it was a text message from Trevor saying, I want to come on a trip with you. Can I come to the next American trip? But I already knew fully that, and I'd seen him as a 3D image coming towards me. See, we're connected. Like, if my friend Stevie in Scotland with Dove Company there, Scotland Ablaze, if I think about him now long enough, he will become aware of me. We all do this. I've got a teaching on it. I'll do it while I'm here, God willing. But the truth is, we're all connected. We've got to start living connected. This really helps. You know, I had some friends come for dinner the other day, and I was sitting on my computer, and I wasn't looking to see whether they'd arrived. I put my spirit out into the front, and when they parked their car, I felt their spirits come into my spirit. And I got up, and I walked to the door exactly at the moment that they came to the door. Because my spirit is bigger than my body. See, Adam could hold the whole earth in his heart. It's all about how big your heart is. You can only cover what's in your heart. To put it another way, you can only transform what you love. So we've been given sight, remote sight. When was the last time God showed you what was going on in the government building or with someone else remotely? Because if you're not seeing it, it's because you're not engaging with the realm. Because there's a realm where it says this, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. So I've seen meetings in Parliament. I've seen meetings in Downing Street because I hold the British government in my heart. I engage with who's in government and I've seen councils connected to laws in the spirit to do with Brexit and other things because I believe that I can see. Did I not say believe and you will see? This is really cool. Please, you know, don't be offended by God's goodness. We could make it smaller if you want. But we would be then, we would be moving away from the future. Because in the future, everybody can do everything I'm talking about. Remember, we are meant to live from the future, not the past. That we are limitless. For the person who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. For in him we live and move and have our being. He can take you anywhere he wants. Isaiah said, lift up your eyes to the heavens, then look upon the earth beneath. Sounds like he wasn't on earth. I love Bob Jones. You know, Bob Jones is in glory now. But Bob Jones met, I think it was, I can't remember which astronaut it was. You probably know this story. He was at a party, and um, one of the famous astronauts were there, but Bob didn't know who he was. He wasn't clued up on a lot of that stuff. He walked up to this astronaut and went, you're a prophet, aren't you? And he's like, no. He said, yes, you are. I can tell. You've been on the moon. I've been there too. <laughs> See, this is a difference between the old creation and the new, is that in the old creation, Adam was only inheriting the earth. It says in Psalms, the heavens belong to God. Heavens include space. Remember, it says, look at the stars in the heavens. Look at the word heavens in your Bible, and you realize it's the cosmos. We're actually in heaven right now, but a lower part of it. Because it says he separated water from water, which was the membrane of the universe, and called it the heavens. It's just Earth's in the wrong location. It's fallen out of the interface point where it used to be as an interface with Eden. All right, okay. But, okay. <laughs> All right, it's fine, it's fine. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, it's just we're moving back to where we should be. Yeah. So the heavens on Earth. Because remember, this is the gates of heaven. The gates where the government sits. That's why Jerusalem will be on the Earth, because it's the gates of heaven which means it's where heaven comes into the creation. It's the funnel, it's the trans-dimensional gateway for Eden. That's the purpose of Earth. 
Okay, right. <laughs> so you're limitless, you know, and, you know, I'll never forget the first time the Lord showed me another part of space. You know, I was praying in the basement soaking. I had no thoughts that you could go to space. It never occurred to me that you could go to space. We were having a wonderful time with friends, worshipping, really enjoying him, giving it our all, and a beam of light came down on my head. And for six seconds, I was pulled as fast as you can imagine. I went from zero to like six seconds. I'm standing on a scene similar to this where there's a blue planet with a ring, and I'm on a moon. And there's an orange nebula with these beings of energy, which I think were angels, but I don't know what they were, worshipping God moving through the clouds. And I could hear like the chimes, like a celestial sound of worship. And I stood, looked to my right, and Jesus was there, standing on this moon with me. I was just as I am now. And he went, "Mm -hmm." and I went, and I'm back in the basement. And in that moment when he looked at me, he went, "Mm mm-hmm. It was like, I just wanted to show you something that I see every day. Because in the new creation, it says all of creation's longing for us to appear. Adam was just given the earth. We've been given every dimension as co-heirs, which means you've got the technology to go beyond earth. Adam couldn't. He could go into heaven, into Eden, or he could go into the earth. You are not tethered here. You are tethered to the divine nature. Which means wherever he is, you can be. And we've been infused with the mind of Christ. You know, saints throughout history, I love Bridget. You know, we get the word bride from Bridget. She was the first woman apostle in the Celtic church. When she became an apostle, you know, she, um, when they prayed for her, she had such authority, Bridget, that she said, if I'm going to be anointed as an apostle, you'll have to anoint these other four women that work with me as apostles. So they had the first Christian apostolic release of women in the Celtic tradition. When they prayed for Bridget, she fell under the power. She touched the, the wooden balcony and branches grew out with green leaves out of it because of the realm of life. But well, one time she was going to negotiate with the chieftain over um, a, a slave and this crime he'd committed. And whilst they were waiting for the chieftain, all of these musical instruments were in the room and none of them knew how to play. She said, by the spirit, we will play these. They grabbed them and played such a symphony that all of these people's lives got changed and they got the peace agreement because they'd never heard music like it. That's exactly how, how Joshua Mills learned to play guitar, uh, play keyboard. He was in a Toronto-style meeting in the Sunday. He got drunk. He was offended by it. They took him back to the basement when he was, he was quite young. They put him to bed laughing drunk. He woke up in the morning and he could play piano. See, we have to start accessing unlimited knowledge. I can't tell you the amount of times I've gone beyond my knowledge. A friend of mine, David Von Blankensee, we do meetings in uh, Melbourne together. He's an Australian. He's also an IT consultant, very well paid. They fly him all around the country. He got flown to do a a, a look at a schematic of a computer system, and he said he was just whacked. It was a half an hour meeting. For 25 minutes, he couldn't hear what they were saying. He was caught up in the cloud, and it was like, wow, 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 wow. And he's just in this whack, just enjoying Jesus. He doesn't even know what they're saying. And then he comes round just five minutes before the meeting ends with them saying, so what do you think we should do? (laughs) David told me this himself. He said, I just said, I bought myself more time by saying what I think you should do is. And he spoke from being in God. And in a minute, he gave them a solution that saved them $3 million. See, you are more intelligent than you've ever imagined. You are super intelligent, but you have to shift dimensions to access it. So you know how to use the internet. Why aren't you using the mind of Christ? Why? I've done it a bunch of times. I had one time where I was being asked questions for three days. After a while, I stopped even thinking. I just sat inside the spirit of wisdom and spoke. Because, you know why I'm so happy? Because I never thought that Jesus would reward me or any of us like he does. He says he's a rewarder 
of those who diligently seek him. I made tiny decisions all my life to pursue him. Tiny moments I stole for him. Tiny prayers and groans. And he paid me more than I deserved. He paid me so much more. And if any one of you decides tonight just one prayer, one touch, one move, one kiss is all you need and he'll take you places you never even dreamed. In fact, you are all going to get there. It says we're all going to be raised up to the fullness of the stature of Christ. The question is, how much of it do you want now? How much of a mess do you want to create now? How much of an explosion do you want now? How much of a breakthrough do you want now? Because I'm believing for nations, nations to come. I'm believing for such a wild expression of Christianity that none of us can even handle it. Like, let's just get offended now and get it over with. See, one of the things that kind of winds me up is like, you know, when the cloud of witnesses appear, like this, they're here right now. And when they come into the room, people are like, oh, you can't talk to them. You can't talk to them. And it's like, okay, what have you been praying for the last 2,000 years on Sunday? Um, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. So you, what, you're going to tell them to go back now? Are you going like, to undo 2,000 years of asking for them to show up? We're like the rudest group of people on the planet. See, we're going beyond Adam. Jesus is the firstborn from the same womb. I love this, Romans 8:29. He is the firstborn from the same womb that reveals our genesis. The son stands first in the line of humanity restored, the firstborn of a new family. So where's your Genesis story? This is crazy. Your Genesis is not Adam. You've been born from a womb, from another dimension. So what are you? The term co-crucified and co-alive define me now. Christ in me. And I in in him. The exact life in Christ is now being repeated in us. We are being co-revealed. See, I don't even like those words that say it, we're going to be faceless and nameless. I don't believe that because God gives you a name. God gives you a face. And it's a co-revealing. He doesn't want to be revealed apart from you because you're part of the color and expression of his nature. And every one of you is different. Every one of you has got a face. Every one of you has got a voice. Every one of you is going to co-create. Every one of you is going to be revealed. The real you. Will the real you stand up? You know, we've got to come out of the closet. Everyone else is. <laughs> See, you've been regenerated. That word regenerated means regenes. You've got a new genetic technology, not from mortal origin, seed, DNA, but from one that is immortal by the ever living and lasting word of God. You've been seeded with immortality. It's time that our body yields to the truth and the truth will set us free. It's time for your consciousness to yield to the reality. You're one with him. You've got one mind with him, one body with him. In fact, your body's so valuable, it is the temple. So why are we destroying and throwing away what he wants to live in? As he is, so are we in the world. This one's extreme. Look at this translation. We are exactly the same as God in this world. You need faith to see this. You need faith to see it, that you are sitting next to immortal, incorruptible, God-like ones. You need to pull on faith. Like I ask for faith. See, I believe for great faith and great grace. Great faith and great grace. We need massive doses of faith. We need faith to really see reality because we're seeing a false world. We can't live in that. Earlier on while we, I was sitting there, I came out of my body and I was looking at you guys and I saw you all as beings of light. And I was just going, these are not human beings. You just see me sitting there. But I was sitting here, as Paul said, if I'm besides myself, it's for God. That word besides means extistemi. It means ek, to be outside of your standing. It's a biblical concept that I can step out of myself to see. One of the ways you can see what's going on in your house is sit in a chair in your house, in his presence, say, Lord, I want to be in you. 
and I want to see, then step up out of your body and move around releasing light. So we are, God is unlocking, I'm coming to the end, the trans-dimensional nature of what we are. See, quantum physics is showing now that there's more than one dimension in this room. Some say 11. I don't know how many, but what I know is that every dimension is part of my inheritance, which means I have to know more than just this room. See, is what's just happening in this room the highest reality? It's a reality, but a superior reality would be you would be seeing beings in this room right now of light, often orbs, but they can like appear in forms, all sorts of... <laughs> But what other dimensions are there? Because Jesus prayed for a guy's eyes, and he said, I see giants. And he went, oh, hang on. <laughs> so w what did he see? Which dimension did he look into? Because it sounds like there's another dimension there in the earth waiting for us to be revealed. You know, one time I was engaged in heaven with a friend in Starbucks in Seattle, and for two hours we went in the spirit, and when I went in the spirit, the, the room looked holographic. Like it was made of energy, because it is. It's frequency, energy, and vibration. And we ascended in the law. We went off... Well, anyway, right, we'll, we'll come back. So we went off somewhere, and God did some really great stuff. When we came back... We got up off the table, we walked to the counter. There was three members of staff. I started to talk to them and I could feel my words were going nowhere and they couldn't see us. I turned to my friend and I realized that everything was muffled around me. And my friend said, we're invisible. So we, he said, we better pull out. And we just pulled out of that ecstasy. We pulled out of that realm. And then suddenly they were shocked. And we're standing there. Do you know, two times I've gone to Walmart. And I've been so in the spirit. I don't even know how this works. And I've even got a trot. We call them trolleys. Do you call them trolleys? A cart? And people, this has happened on two occasions where I've been praying in the morning. I've gone to Walmart to do the family shop. And everybody bumps into me. And doesn't see me until they hit the, tro the cart, tro trolley cart. And one time it was so bad. I mean, every, imagine you're going down the aisle and every person walks into you. I had to pull out. I said, Lord, I'm in too far. See, Jesus knew how to do this. He said they moved him towards a cliff and he says he walked through them. He hid himself in the temple. Imagine this is the temple. How would I hide if you're all looking at me and you're really angry? <laughs> Peekaboo! <laughs> Thank you, Father. So this is going to be the best time to be on the earth. Do you know God goes from glory to glory and he chose when you would live and where you would live which means he set you up for the greatest manifestation of his glory that the world has ever seen, that he saved the best till last. And whether you like it or not, this, this thing is going somewhere. This thing is strapped in and it's getting faster. And we're in the era of force change. If you're on this planet, you're in on it. These are days of joy. I give you permission to live in his joy. We should not be unfamiliar with joy. Joy is the natural condition of those who believe. In his presence is fullness of joy. In him is life and joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. I know that you've been hurt, but don't let the hurt be your preferred position. Let joy be your preferred state. Let joy be the life that you choose. Rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice and be glad. Wow, wow. So we move into an era of joy, a new creation, that we're not condemned to, wow, failure, but we've been condemned to victory. The cross has condemned us to victory. Wow. And we live in the wine of his love and in the wine of the cross. 
that he makes all things new. Thank you, Father. Amen. How was everyone doing after last night? It was kind of like the jogging machine was on full belt, wasn't it? There was no like, <laughs> you've arrived, let's go. <laughs> so I hope you're okay with that.